In the fall of 2011, I was beginning my first year as an inner city middle school teacher. Now you might find this hard to believe, but I only had six weeks of training for that job, and it left me woefully unprepared for life in that classroom. During my year as an educator, I experienced the trials and the tribulations of working in education. Like many teachers around our country, I had to buy supplies for my students. But here, I was also asked to teach three years worth of material in one, because the school could not afford a sixth or an eighth grade teacher. I didn't have enough desks or books for my students, and I even received death threats. After several violent experiences in and around the school and surrounding neighborhoods, I came to the realization, this is not how I want to spend my life. And in the midst of a PhD program working to become a professor, I knew I had to leave behind my dream of working in traditional education entirely. I had to refocus my life. We are living in the midst of the fourth industrial revolution. This version characterized by scope, velocity, and systems impact will disrupt nearly every industry in every nation around the world. And it has ripple effects that you can feel in your daily life all the way through to the global economy. One of those is how we think about the word work. The meaning of the word work has and continues to shift in big and important ways. For many people, work no longer means nine to five, a commute, or even a designated desk. Companies are offering remote and flexible work terms because technology allows for it and increasingly employees demand it. An entire generation of independent contractors are leveraging their expertise to live outside of traditional boundaries, all enabled by the digital world in which we live. So, Getting back to the future of work. The future of work is a whole new horizon, but it's also a wild west. And that's expected to change even more in the coming decades. Outside the confines of corporate America, digital freelancers are paving their own way, choosing freedom-based contract work from wherever in the world they want to live, and serving clients using only the power of a computer and an internet connection. And this isn't just in America, it's global. In fact, research from the World Economic Forum indicates that the top socioeconomic drivers of changes in our workforce are the changing nature of work itself and the desire for flexible work. So getting back to that moment of crisis that ended my teaching career, it occurred to me that I had to pave my own way. Fast forward a few months and I had launched a career as a freelance writer. Since then, I've been able to manage my life and business from anywhere in the world, which has come in handy as a military wife who has moved seven times in nine years. I earn a good living, I spend my time doing what I love, and I'm in control of my work schedule and my time away from work. And I still get to teach too, except now I help people launch or grow their own careers in the wild west of freelancing. So I became a writer. How did I decide that particular path? What indication did I have that I could make a living as a professional writer? Not much, but enough. A college professor of mine in the English department had pulled me aside after class one day and suggested that I change majors to join his department and leave behind economics. He said he loved my writing. He thought it was something I should pursue. At that moment, I didn't take his advice, but that comment flashed into my mind as I submitted my resignation from my teaching career. It gave me the courage to pursue a professional career as a writer, even though I had no training, certifications, or background in journalism or communications. I was suddenly fully immersed in and committed to a career for which I was perfectly suited. Google became my career counselor as I began to research how to become a freelance writer. I went from learning the basics about how to freelance to turning this into a growing business working for hundreds of clients I have never met in person. And I was excited to land my first few gigs for the extra cash. But soon the demand for my services grew, and my part-time job as a freelance writer was paying me more than the full-time position I'd taken at an insurance agency to make ends meet. That's when I knew this was real. Since 2013, I've worked full-time online as a six-figure freelance contractor and have even recruited and operated teams of freelancers as a digital project manager. And all this raises the question, what is a freelancer? Simply put, freelancers are self-employed independent contractors, and we get paid by different companies at different times. We've always had freelancers in the economy, 
but their impact in the coming decades will be significant. Thanks to technology, it's never been faster, easier, or less expensive to launch a freelance business as a virtual assistant, translator, web designer, web developer, graphic designer, course creation expert, marketing expert, proofreader, editor, writer, and that's just to name a few. Digital platforms have made it easier for us to reach and do business with companies in all industries. And because of technology, business is conducted at lightning speed with the opportunity to land clients, whether B2B or B2C, in a matter of days or even hours. Now, myths about freelance work, such as that it's poorly paid, that it's unstable, or that it's for out-of-work creatives, have traditionally kept people from purposefully pursuing these businesses. But that's all changing right now. By 2027, nearly 60% of the workforce will have had some experience as independent contractors, according to Upwork's Freelancing in America study. And a growing number of them are choosing to leave traditional employment and pursue freelancing full time. I've worked with companies as small as solopreneurs and as big as Microsoft and Truecar. And what they all have in common is this desire to tap into freelance talent. While many of them still do have in-house full-time employees, it makes more sense sometimes to partner with a specific expert on a project or on a retainer basis. This growing demand for freelance talent combines with low barriers to entry, which means that more employees than ever are looking to leave and start their own empire. And it's not just a good time to be a freelancer, it's a great time to be a well-paid freelancer. According to the State of Independence in America study, more than 21% of independent contractors earn $100,000 a year or more, a number that is expected to grow. Could you be next? Here's how it works in my freelance business. I reach out to a prospective client via email, connecting on LinkedIn, job board sites like Upwork, or through a referral from a past client. Some of those touch points yield a conversation about their needs, after which I create a custom proposal with a rate and a timeline. We sign a contract, I complete the work, and submit billing for payment. And seven out of 10 times, those clients will hire me again to work with them over the long run. One of the biggest challenges for people leaving full-time employment is adapting from the employee mindset to one of entrepreneur, CEO, and business owner. To be a successful freelancer, you must accept the premise that organization is key that a clear work schedule and meeting deadlines, those are non-negotiables. You also have to be comfortable putting yourself out there to negotiate fees and contract terms with clients and keep an eye on the market to see gaps that you could fill with your expertise. You have to lean into your strengths at the same time that you get comfortable with hearing the word no a lot and you use that response to tweak your approach, samples, and your pitch. To consider your own freelance options, Begin by analyzing your past experience. For example, an office administrator probably has many skills that could translate over to that of virtual assistant. Someone who loves reading and writing could excel as an editor or a freelance writer with a little bit of learning about online marketing. If you don't have specific experience, explore something you're passionate about and use technology to help you learn as you grow. Books, courses, virtual coaches, and podcasts can all help you launch and expand your freelance career. Once you're clear about the focus of your freelance business, educate yourself about those core elements of online marketing and develop a pitch and work samples. If you don't have any professional work samples you can use, create your own. By giving clients a taste of what your work would look like as a finished product, they can evaluate for your talent and style before ever working together. I knew upon entering college that I was not suited for a traditional nine to five, but I had no idea there were any other options. And in hindsight, my only regret is not starting sooner. So let me tell you about a couple of my freelance friends and what this looks like for them. There's Marie, who's a self-confessed lost soul, and she turned her independent streak into an entrepreneurial spirit now helping other women break the mold and grow their businesses as a Facebook ads strategist. She went from knowing traditional employment wasn't for her to building her passion for social media into an at-home business. And Dave, who used his offline experience in marketing 
to create courses about business that have now reached more than 773,000 students around the world. He started small with a couple of courses to test his market and then now produces several per year as a six-figure earner. There's Jenna, a former elementary school teacher who left the classroom to pursue a career on her own terms where she could still make an impact as a Pinterest strategist. She saw the power of Pinterest as a personal user and turned that into a full-time career. Andrew used his side hustle blogging, you used his side hustle income from blogging and course design consulting to travel, buy a house, pay for his wedding, and save money, all while he still worked a full-time job. He used his past experience in education and curriculum design and turned that into the skills of an educational entrepreneur. Freelancers like these already contribute an estimated trillion dollars to our economy. So it's certainly something you should be thinking about how you could tap into the power of this rapidly growing section of the workforce. And here's what I love about freelancing. Trying it out costs you little to nothing. And you don't have to commit to it 100% to see if it's the right fit for you. You can start small like Dave, Marie, Jenna, and Andrew with one client or project and grow from there. Trying out new creative projects with little to no risk and minimal startup costs makes it easier than ever to launch a sustainable business as a freelancer. This might start as a side hustle for you and grow into a full-time career. It could be your creative outlet while you stay in your traditional employment. Or it could be your opportunity to pursue something you're good at, but you never earned a degree in. When you finally discover your passion and pursue it as a freelancer, you can even use the power of the freelance economy yourself by using project management software or hiring virtual assistants so that you can get more done. And the good news is that you don't need to reinvent the wheel thanks to the millions of successful freelancers in the market, including over 56 million in America alone. Follow a proven path. You'll need to evaluate for demand, create work samples, and a pitch. It's never been a better time to launch a career as a freelancer as this demand has grown and as the flexibility has increased. Today, the freelance generation is turning to independent contract work as a powerful tool that workers are using to earn a living, live the life they want to live, and tell the story they want the world to hear. Freelancing is poised to be a driving force for our economy and to further contribute to how we define the word work whether your company could outsource to a freelance professional to leverage time or expertise, or whether you're thinking about launching your own freelance venture, how will you be a part of that driving force? Thank you.